All right, welcome back to the next video in this mini golf tutorial series here inside Construct 3. In the last video, we set up our course, we set up all the sprites, and now we're going to make things do things. So I'm gonna select the ball object in our object types, and then let's come over here to our properties panel and edit behaviors. Let's add a behavior, scroll down, and let's pick physics. Let's exit out of that, come over here to our properties panel, and I'm gonna set up a few values in our density at 10, our friction at two, our elasticity at 0 0.4, and our linear damping at one, and then our angular damping at 10. And then if you highlight or click on bullet, it'll tell you down here, enable, enhanced collision detection for fast moving objects. Well, we're gonna have that. So we're going to select bullet and we wanna enable. So that sets up our physics for, at least for testing for right now. So for physics on one object to interact with anything else, it also has to have physics. So we want our bumpers to also have physics. So let's select bumpers. Let's go down to behaviors, add a new behavior pick physics. We can exit out of that. And the main thing we want to do with this is we want to check immovable. And then I'm going to put this at bounding box. Uh, probably don't need to, but this makes sure that the bounding box stays at the width and length of the sprite. And then our friction and elasticity can stay the same. Make sure it's enabled. That looks good. I'm gonna go back to our ball, and over here, we're going to use an instance variable for the ball. And the variable I wanna create, I'm gonna call it, uh, we're gonna to need to keep track of how many shots that we take. I'm gonna do that with the ball itself. So I'm gonna call this shots taken. And its initial value is gonna be zero, and it is a number, so okay. And you can see, if we exit out of that, when we have the ball selected, it shows up over here under instance variables. It's not gonna show up on your event sheet like global variables do, so this is just an instance variable for the instance of our ball object. Next, I wanna pick the aim object, and I wanna add an instance variable to aim. So when we start coding this, I'm going to want to know when the aiming line is in use because that is going to affect uh, the meter when it runs and should not run. So whenever it is aiming, I'm going to want to know. So I'm just gonna call this is aiming. I'm gonna leave that as a number and as zero and exit out of that. You can see it popped up over here, is aiming zero. And I think those are the only instance variables we need. So let's go ahead and if you have everything put together like I do, or at least similar to what I do, uh, we are good to go into the event sheet and start laying down some code. Don't forget to save often through your projects. I can't stress that enough. I'm gonna go ahead and save. So let's go ahead and add our first event. And that is going to be a system on start of layout. And I've said this in other tutorials. If you're new to my channel, then I will explain it again. This little box up here is for searching. If I get rid of everything, all of the, uh, the conditions are listed here for system. If I don't wanna search through this and I know what I'm looking through, I can just click in this little search box and type in what I'm looking for. So on start of layout, that is what I want. I'll select that. And on the start of layout, I want to go into system and I'm going to say create object. I'm gonna choose the object, that object's gonna be ball. And the layer, this is something I uh, forgot to do already, so we will do that in just a second. On layer, let's go ahead and change that to uh, quotation mark, game, quotation mark. So game in quotations. Uh, it does not recognize that layer because we haven't created it yet, but we will. 
and the x and y coordinate of where I want this ball object to be created is going to be where we placed our ball spawn object. So I'm just going to type in ball spawn. There it is, ball spawner dot x to get the x coordinate, and then ball spawner dot y to get the y coordinate. And then let's go over here to layers. So even if you have the free version, this will layers is still you can have up to two layers. So I'm going to click on layer zero here, and I'm going to rename it game G A M E, just like we named it over here. So now it will read game. And then I'm going to add a layer to the top, and I'm just going to call this HUD. That stands for Heads Up Display. We will do some things with that later. But for now, let's select our game layer, because that's where all the objects we're working with are located. And make sure HUD's on top, game's on below the HUD layer. OK, so with game layer selected, let's go back to our event sheet. Let's just go ahead and play this. And right away, we saw our ball drop. And there's our ball spawner, and our ball dropped, and it landed on our bumpers. So the bumpers didn't move, even though they also have physics just like ball does. But our ball needs to be told that it does not have gravity. So I'm going to, in start of layout, I'm going to add an action, go into sprites, ball, and then I'm just going to start typing in gravity and it says set world gravity. I'm going to set world gravity to zero. So on the start of layout, our gravity is going to be zero. So I'm going to play that, and on the start of the layout, it creates the ball right where we told it to create it, and it does nothing. That's good. That's what we want. So while we're here, let's click on the ball spawner object and scroll down in the properties and go to initially visible and uncheck that. That way that won't exist, well it'll exist, it just won't be visible. I'm going to add another event and I'm going to say system uh, every tick, that means every frame of this game that plays, which it's 60 frames per second, so in most cases it's going to be every 60 times every second this is going to take place. And that is, we're going to add an action, go to sprites, go to our aim, select aim, and we want to set the position. Set position to the x coordinate of ball, so ball dot x and ball dot y. And it's not there. OK, so uh, I, I know what happened. <laughs> There's two instances of the ball, because when we start the layout on the event sheet, we're telling it to create a ball object right here. And it does, but this ball is still here. So we're setting this aim, this object, and it's picking this ball. So it's actually, it's. Uh, setting the position to the x and y value of this ball, but we just can't see it. So on start a layout, I'm going to add an action. I'm going to pick the sprite ball, and I'm going to type in destroy. And I'm going to move that to above. To, let's just move it to the top for right now. And we want it above create object. So we want to destroy the, any ball object that's on the screen first, and then create the ball. Let's do that again, and there it is. There's our little aim device. Okay, so let's go ahead and this is for everybody. Let's add a group. So right click on your screen and say add group, and let's call this one initialize. Now this does add an event if you're working on the free version, but I'm pretty sure we stay under the 50 event limit. Come down here to add event. Let's add an event, and let's go into input and pick touch. Now we're going to move the aim line around. I want to do that while I'm dragging my cursor or my finger across a mobile device. So I'm going to say is in touch. Let's select that and the action is going to be, let's pick the aim, and I want to set the angle and I'm going to use uh, an expression here. So 
I'm going to use angle parentheses and you'll see this pop up and it'll show you the expression that you're using angle and then it'll say x1 y1 x2 y2 and they're all separated by commas and then down here it tells you x position of the first point so the first point that we want to get the the information from is the x and y of our aim line so I'm going to type in aim and there's our aim sprite uh, select aim and I'm going to say aim.x, comma, aim.y, comma. Now it wants to know where we're setting the angle to. We know what angle we're setting and where, where the angle is coming from. Now where do we set it to? And that's going to be our touch object. So wherever we're touching or uh, wherever we have clicked with our cursor. So touch dot x, comma touch dot y and then in parentheses okay so let's go ahead and play that and we have just like we created before but now whenever I click it uh, drags the line around but see if uh, you can figure out what's going on I, I, I know exactly what we did so whenever I click it shoots it to the left you see that so if I click out here to the right of it, it shoots straight up. Bottom goes to the right. If I'm on the left, it goes down. So what it's doing is it's taking wherever we touch or click and it's moving the zero angle to where we are. And what that means is if we come into our aim sprite, we have it pointing straight up and down. In Construct 3 Game Engine, the angle is set up just like this. So zero is to our right. 90 is down, 180 to the left, 270 is up. So whenever we click, we're telling the zero, which is to the right, to be where we are touching. So this side of our aim line is always going to be pointing towards where we are touching. We don't want that. So let's go back into this and after we say all of this, let's just add 90 degrees. So plus 90. And then play that. And there we go. Our line follows us wherever we go as long as we're touching. See, I let up on the mouse, I click, and it follows us as long as we're telling it where to go. All right, so we accomplished a lot. And I'm going to end this video here. And in the next video, we are going to set up the rest of the controls for the ball and get it moving and I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to save.